Hello and welcome to a new episode of Mind Expanding The Other Russian or The Other Russian Mind Expanding, I don't know which shivers which. Anyway, today I'm gonna talk about LSD, alright? And yeah, by the end of this episode you'll learn who was the first official on the record sitter of a psychedelic experience, let's put it this way. First things first, um, yeah, so I decided to continue the conversation straight away from the previous episode because you rarely have a chance to sit and record, it takes time and effort and arrangement and preparation and shit like that. And as you know, time is of the essence at, uh, as always. So yeah, there's always a lack of it. Anyway. Going back to LSD, and this is the topic that is widely covered, widely known. I mean, you can go through all sorts of the information outlets available, how to change your mind, Netflix, you can read the book My Problem Child by uh, Albert Hoffman. By the way, spoiler alert, uh, creator of LSD, namely LSD25, and you'll learn why 25 in a bit. <laughs> if you don't, if I forget, just put it in the comments, don't forget to subscribe and like. Spread the fucking knowledge, right? Nothing's illegal. I'm not endorsing anybody consume any illegal substances. It is your un obligation to understand the legal nuances of the jurisdiction you are located at. Or at least where your physical body is located at. Because you never know. But anyway, going back to LSD and the topic as such. It is probably covered well enough, but still I'm gonna do it. Because I need to practice, as I said before, for the Russian audience that... Uh, Probably never heard many people talk about LSD in the open in Russian language, so I'm gonna do that. Hopefully nobody's gonna chase me and uh, put on the Interpol for, you know, talking about it. Again, I'm not endorsing any of that, I'm just informing people. The people need to know the access to information is not prohibited. It's not illegal to know about LSD and how it works in mind. And, who was the inventor? Consider the history episode. Going back to Albert Hoffman. So, um, yeah, again, spoiler alert. 103 years was his age when he died. Oh, I may be wrong here. Maybe 105. But yeah, double fucking check me and put it in the comments. So, he went... He is a Swiss citizen. He was. And he was born in Basel, if I remember correctly. But anyway, somewhere there in the nice and wealthy Switzerland. The, probably something if next life exists, I would probably be good idea to be born in Switzerland. <laughs> because yeah, if you're born in Switzerland, you're like, you made it, you're like karmic uh, top of the food chain or whatever. But yeah, I mean, the prices there are just extremely insane. And uh, to, talking about with the recent inflation, right? Everywhere across the world, things are fucked up because of war, because of other aspects. But yeah, of course, fossil fuels still run our entire world. I decided to pour some tea with honey. Chestnut honey is pretty good, actually. Yeah, good. Mixture with Earl Grey. <laughs> Basic ones, no brands here. So he started working at Sanders at 1929. And um, at 1935, he started to um, study... Mm. type of fungi that parasites on oats and other types of shit I've totally forgot so he started to study the fungus specifically and back in the day there were you know competition with other pharmaceutical companies to find new drugs to solve these or that physical mainly problem rather than mental but yeah, he was doing some attempts and uh, variations. Uh, the reason he chose that fungi... Damn, it escaped my mind completely. Fuck it. Just check it out <laughs> and put it in the comments uh, so that people know what, what's it called. So he had some kind of anecdotal evidence that it helps in certain scenarios like with the contractions when women were giving birth it was given to those uh, in, in, in those cases but there were other kind of healing evidence here and there so the attempt was to understand like what is happening but at the same time funny enough well not funny <laughs> because it caused a lot of damage so the spread of the fungi in dry and other variations of, what are those called? I don't know, grains. But yeah, caused big issues 
for Europe. Like, people died, went mad and shit like that. So, you know, psychedelics are dangerous and uh, you need to recognize it and don't kind of mm, take them with the hope to that everything's going to be okay. Don't do it. Just check out the safety rules. It's one of the episodes that I made. Just go through them, first of all. He started to dissect the molecules and make some derivatives or whatnot. And he's been doing this for like three years. And, and, and 1938, he made a um, 25th attempt of dissecting of one of the derivatives of the fungi. It was called lysergic diethylamine. But yeah, so it was 25th attempt. He passed that uh, finding of a molecule to his fellow colleagues at R&D. And they came back to him saying that it has no value. It doesn't sort shit. So just, you know, it's pointless. Forget about it, basically. So the war started, Second World War. Well, <clears throat> depends which country you ask. For Russia, it started in 1941. Great uh, patriotic war, as they call it. And yeah, there are still some <laughs> some weird talks around who was the, the one uh, on the top. But this is insane. Like, who, what the fuck are they talking about? Who was on the top? I mean, 20 million at least in Russia died. And in other countries, I don't even know. You guess it's an insane number for humanity. But anyway, still, each life is precious. It's important to value it. So the war started, and um, Albert Hoffman was a bit of uh, caught in between the, you know, his obligations, and then put his research on hold. But after some time, he didn't understand why, but back in 1943, he somehow decided to go back to that research. And... Uh, <laughs> Who knows why? I mean, even Albert wasn't able to explain like what exactly brought him back. Or at least I don't remember. But yeah, check out his book. It's worth uh, reading. To understand his, you know, like moral sufferings in a sense. Because he was a father. He's still a father of like LSD, as you call it. But it caused a lot of damage. And it was misused and shit like that. So... Imagine the gravity of the situation, your responsibility, you created that shit, and then, you know, things happen. So, of course, it uh, bears a strong weight, but yeah, I mean, 103 years still, <laughs> long life for a father of LSD. Actually, I tend to notice that uh, people who are, like, strongly committed to the, um, I don't why am I saying strongly committed? It's not like strongly committed, they understand the value, the therapeutic potential of it. They're, they typically tend to live longer. Um, but maybe it's just my observation. I'm totally wrong here. You need to double check me on everything, what I'm saying. But not really, it's up to you. I mean, eventually you'll find out that I don't bullshit you. So anyway, going back to the story, right? On 16th of April, 1943, he uh, resynthesized the molecule, just went through the process of creating it one more time. And then he um, accidentally experienced uh, acid trip. Why am I saying accidentally? Because part of the substance, the molecule, the liquid form of it, had a connection with his, uh, if I remember correctly, like hands. So he got on his skin and then went into the system. On 16th of April, he felt a bit dizzy after the contact with LSD 25th attempt. And this is the version that is most known because after that, uh, things went mad. Uh, so he experienced his first trip, which is um, detail, depicted in details in his book. He went home on the bike and that famous ride on the bike and uh, the world is melting and made an impact on him. So he tripped and uh, he returned to the lab. He was like, what the fuck? Maybe something happened to me. He didn't understand like what was that. And then he decided that maybe that was the substance, the molecule that affected him. So on April 19th, 1943, this is the widely known date in the psychedelic community, Albert Hoffman logs in the journal his first acid trip well lsd trip or back in the day it was not it was just very specific so 
I'm going to ingest this and it will, the potency of the substance is insane. So if I remember correctly, 250 micrograms, not milli. So 250 micrograms. This is like, you, you can't even see it basically. <laughs> so this was the dose and um, he went on his first trip. And interestingly enough, is that he is a fir the first trip sitter, right? So I, I promise to tell you about that person. She, her name skips my memory, mainly due to the fact that Albert Hoffman is out there as, you know, the father of LSD. And back in the day, if you look at the um, science community, probably still, but le less than back in the days, it was just a uh, white male man. So, I mean, there was no place for women. Luckily, things are changing and uh, women have more exes. Of course, it's not illegal. And trust me, I do understand because I'm working on a um, social impact project that ideally uh, will help uh, in women, at least in India or I don't know, in any other country where it's relevant, of course, to surpass their issues that are they are experiencing throughout their life in terms of the menstruation and problems that are associated with it. So it's a project called Sri Shakti. At some point in time, I've recorded uh, an explanation about it, but I'm gonna go there in the details quite soon because I'm building a new deck that uh, will be pitched to some people, maybe in the government of India. I don't know if I get there, just to some people in India <laughs> because I'm going to India for like two weeks. It is still my attempt to make things happen because the project that I envisioned back in May was around making it happen while India co host, no, hosts G20 by the end of 2023. But yeah, anyway, going back to the story. So the reason I was talking about is that the name of the trip sitter, I didn't put it to say it to you, but please find her name and put it in the comments. It is important to know women are extremely important. And yeah, talking about some conspiracy theories. If you find a specific post, and if I forget to put it in uh, in the description, just again, put it in the comments, I'll get back to you. So the link there says um, Fanatics Project to improve, yeah, Fanatics Project is dedicated to women, it's health, etc. But when you copy the link, and you send this link to this post to somebody, the link says slightly different. It says Fanatics Project dedicated to activity. And this makes no fucking sense. The word women is shorter than activity. Like what the fuck? So women are replaced with activity. Hence, it is important to talk about women's general like efforts and uh, like input into the development of the entire humankind. Like talking about uh, Valentina, Maria Sabina, unfortunately the day of the sitter that was hosting the first conscious acid trip uh, by Albert Hoffman, she actually uh, as well first uh, woman that uh, was tripping on LSD in June of the same year, 1943. But yeah, unfortunately, that information is not widely known. So here's the story. No, I mean, that's the end of the story, pretty much. But what, again, what I was saying is that the story is typically known by many people, uh, but not all know the nuances and the details. And of course, as you can notice, I don't know all the details myself or don't remember them. But it is important to talk about it, especially um, about women a part in it. Because if it were, if it wasn't for women, none of us would have appeared in our life, basically, right? So, well, at least not until people are being born from in vitro, they are being born, but they're they're not. Yeah, they're still in the womb of a woman's body or female body. I don't know. I mean. Nowadays, it's hard to be politically correct with all those nuances. And I don't want to kind of devalue the importance of it. But yeah, sometimes it's just I'm not good at it. So I do apologize if I offended somebody. 
but I will offend somebody definitely. That's <coughs> the nature of my spirit. It's not my spirit. I read in the book. I mean, imagine that I was uh, in US in 2006, I was working trial program, and I would I bought a book, like small book. It's like this size, like small square that you can put in the pocket. I don't know. Anyway, so it is built around my specific birth date, not like uh, year, but date. And uh, it depicts very interestingly, I read it recently because I was going through some old stuff that I need to just sort out and throw out, you know, when uh, life happens, you happen to gather some stuff that uh, at some point in time you probably need to get rid of, but yeah. And that, that book, that explains a lot about my personality. I was like, fuck, I don't believe in horoscopes or shit like that. But <laughs> yeah, that was strong shit there. So long story short, going back to Albert Hoffman, once he made the discovery, um, Sanders decided to experiment and, uh, you know, give it out to the scientists, to the psychiatrists. So the reason why psychedelic renaissance or rediscovery happened is because of the science progress. People were planning to treat diseases and first uh, health and then that particular substance was used to address mental health as well and the shipments of LSD-25, Levzergic diethylamide, if I pronounce it correctly, was sent out to psychologists and psychiatrists and actually it was in psychiatry in the mental institutions where LSD was first used to treat uh, like severe mental issues uh, that cover like schizophrenia, bipolar disease, and unfortunately not all of it got logged properly, or maybe, I don't know what happened, but you just need to dig in and, and see what happened in there, because originally is what was used to, you know, try and heal those mental illnesses. However, quite fast, people in the scientific community recognized the potential to treat other mental Ill illnesses and issues and eventually gradually more and more psychologists or psychiatrists have been using LSD in their therapy uh, sessions with their clients. Of course when you say more you're not talking about millions but anyway not yeah at least. What I'm saying here is that this is the core direction where it all emerged whereas for uh, general like mushrooms and uh, the discovery that happened with uh, Maria Sabina of Maria Sabina and the Midnight Rituals by uh, Valentina Gerken Vassen and uh, Gordon Vassen in uh, Central America see my previous episode is happened around the same time so two parallel happenings basically started and uh, launched the psychedelic revolution or I don't know the rediscovery of uh, substances of entheogens in the western world and the fallout of that discovery of course requires additional explanation and a lot of time because a lot happened since then until 1970 or 1971 where the drug enforcement uh, pack got um, promoted by Richard Nixon. So between those years, a lot happened. Some good stuff, some bad stuff, and I can go into details because I know some, but of course not everything. So if you want me to talk about it, just put it in the comments and I'll make an episode about it. But yeah, the hippies, beatniks, the... Uh, anti-war movement by the way so psychedelics anti-war and do you see any connections like people understand that this is like extremely stupid decision to kill people because human life is extremely valuable and those people tried to stop war in vietnam and richard nixon responded like hmm i cannot i'll ban hippies what can i do Ooh, i can ban psychedelics hippies consume psychedelics I got him. It worked for him, but unfortunately for the entire world, uh, the, the fallout happened. So my theory still is that uh, US runs the world pretty much. But yeah, here's the story. So thank you for watching. I'm gonna stop here and uh, continue the preparation for my uh, trip to India, finally. And thank you. Like, share, subscribe, spread the knowledge, donate if you want. <laughs> I have some. I definitely appreciate. I'm still struggling with those fucking financial systems. So. One of the financial systems uh, blocked my card, 
like three weeks ago and like what the fuck i'm legally i have a legal status i get a permanent resident status i got like all the documents i rent officially i got a contract and they're like checking verifying some fucking information for like three weeks and like yeah there's a homophobia <laughs> right so yeah i'm just part of this uh, fallout i guess um statistic but yeah again thanks for watching and until next time